My name is Jim DiCarlo, and I'm the director of the MIT Quest for Intelligence and the co-director of the Center for Brains, Minds, and Machines. In fall of 2023, we celebrated CBMM's remarkable history. I remember seeing the sign Center for Brains, Minds, and Machines outside of uh, Tommy's office and feeling this like joy of like, oh, this is what I've ever wanted. Like I didn't know that a place that is thinking about all these things would exist. Really good interdisciplinary interactions is not something you see every day in academia, even though it's a sort of value that is promulgated. And I think the CBMM did a really remarkable job bringing people together that were far enough apart that they could learn something from each other, but also close enough together so that they could effectively talk to each other. It feels like this interdisciplinary area between brains, minds, and machines is so popular now, um, but I think a lot of that popularity is thanks in large part due to CBMM um, and the intellectual influence that's had on so many people in the field. Some of the brightest minds in uh, neuroscience and uh, machine learning came together to discuss important topics, to tell each other what they're thinking about, why it is important, and in a way inspire the rest of us at the time I was a trainee to really think about what is it that we want to do in the field of neuroscience in general. And so that has been more challenging than I originally expected, but it's also been much more rewarding than I could have imagined because it introduces you to a community of people that love talking about the mind, love talking about their own thought process and getting to questions that are very curiosity driven where you don't find that outside of this community. And so it's been more rewarding than I thought. Like it's, it's not just about the work, but the immersiveness of how everybody else is thinking. CBMM created a new field the science of intelligence, which will be deeply important in the future. CBMM has produced hundreds of research papers, but I think more fundamentally, it's changed the direction of how people think about important problems within the science of intelligence. It provided a way for this gen whole generation of students to kind of start getting together and talking to each other and to start to learn to speak a common language, to get exposure to other faculty that kind of were in the same space. But this is the, the life that I got to live and I was very happy living this life of cross-collaboration at CBMM. And I think for a trainee that was just really, really unique to get to interact with all these giants in the field in this like interdisciplinary area of intelligence. It has provided a forum for people to dialogue and brainstorm and think about new projects and new ideas. I enjoy that sense that we were part of a larger community, that we were part of a larger effort, and that it would take all of us coming together. And has really allowed us to tackle questions that otherwise we would not have been able to tackle. It's given the students exposure to the, this really kind of cutting edge perspective. And so our students have, like, have learned about like all this stuff that's kind of become very influential. But I think they learned about it before almost everybody else, you know. Um, and so they're kind of ahead of the game and, and um, they've become leaders in, in the field as a, as a consequence. And I think that is really in large part because of CBMM. A lot of people from here will go found startup companies, will found labs that will be leading the field. And I think this is a testimony to the success of CBMM. I feel like so many of the people I know in the field I met through CBMM first, and it's just such a cool way to have spurred a lot of collaborations and friendships. The legacy of CBMM will not just be in the research it produced, but also um, in all of the artifacts that are now publicly available um, for education. I feel that we've arrived at a place where the questions are within our grasp. We can actually try and answer these questions, but we have to do it together. And this isn't going to be something where a single investigator or a single team or a single department can really tackle the complexities of these problems. And as technology gets better, as everything advances, we have more tools, we have more opportunities, we have more resources. And now the question becomes, what are we going to do with these tools? How are we going to put them all together? And this is the kind of thing that CBMM helped us all understand. It's by just providing a larger umbrella where ideas can be exchanged in a practical way, that is going to be, I think, important for the field in general. And that's where I think CBMM was instrumental. Perhaps the most important legacy CBMM leaves is the Brains, Minds, and Machines summer course. Hundreds of students have come to the summer school, spending three weeks in an intensive learning environment. And the students bring varied perspectives and experiences that lead them to new ideas and research. Many students return as teaching assistants and then pursue academic careers and return as instructors. 
Others have entered industry or launched startups, and there's no greater success story for a school. The summer course was uh, created at the beginning of uh, CBMM with the intention of uh, creating a new field essentially and training a new generation of students that could fluidly converse between uh, neuroscience and cognitive science and AI. It's a very competitive program. They are selected uh, amongst 300 candidates. Uh, we selected 30 plus students. They are amazing. They are from all over the world. It's a chance to sort of spread the gospel, if you will, to kind of take this perspective that we think is really important here and to give people people from elsewhere an opportunity to hear a little bit about that. It is an opportunity to help hundreds of young researchers to change the trajectory of their research and give them the knowledge uh, to study intelligence in all its complexity. I have really enjoyed the summer course. This is actually the second time that I applied to be here. That's how much I was excited about it. It's been really great through the lectures and the tutorials to just get this expansive understanding of all different kinds of both models and cognitive science and the ways that we can kind of bring these modalities all together to try and understand intelligence. We had a workshop about uh, theory. AI connected to human intelligence. Neuroscience and computer science. And on robotics. Deep learning and about machine learning in general. It made professors feel very accessible, like I could just sit down next to them at lunch and have a conversation about life or about science, and that's something I hadn't experienced before. My participation in the summer school is one of the most meaningful and satisfying experiences in my life. I'm a faculty now, and I don't need to be here for three weeks, spending my summer here, but I still choose to. And I think that, at least for me, it tells me that this is an important factor in my life. It's kind of the best three weeks of the year, academically, sometimes for me. And one of the highlights of that is the interaction with the students. We will always need an influx of young people to build on our achievements and to take it into the future. We need people to be able to think about the brain and intelligence from every angle, from molecules to circuits to algorithms and everything in between. And the best way to do it was to educate young researchers from all over the world to make them equally comfortable in neuroscience, cognitive science and AI. So we think that it's important, in addition to traditional uh, lectures and discussions, to have students learn by doing. And that involves specific projects whereby students are working on new ideas, usually outside of their comfort zone. A fantastic opportunity to take a risk and dive into a field that you never tried before. My project is definitely outside of my comfort zone. I am learning a lot of new skills, which is really great. As time went on, people started kind of branching out and like doing almost like side projects within the summer course. There was one at one point to control a drone using EEG signals from the brain. Some of them said that uh, time is passing so quickly, uh, even though they've been here for over a week. In the past, uh, the theory workshop used to be two-thirds of the way down, and even at that point, people were not fatigued. They were excited, they were engaged. I've had the opportunity to meet so many people, I had so many interesting discussions, learning so much also and yeah, extremely motivating and stimulating environment for science. If I have a question, there's always somebody that I can go to to get a really great answer and feedback and just point me to really helpful resources. Students have come back uh, with a number of assets from these courses. Um, one of them is just basic skills. But I think maybe the more important and sort of more difficult to quantify uh, asset that they've taken away is uh, really a kind of broader thinking about uh, the science of intelligence. I mean, this was really the first course on the science of intelligence from this perspective, and it continues to be very influential. It has instilled maybe a bit more confidence for me for moving forward and being like, okay, I do understand these principles more deeply. It also really kick-started the project that I think now will, will uh, be the focus of my dissertation. I had actually a friend who was telling me, should I apply? And after two days, I told him, you definitely should, it's really great. Many of us can't think about CBMM without thinking of Tommy Poggio. Tommy has been a mentor to generations, and we are so grateful for the role he has played in shaping our field through his research, his academic advising, but most of all, his friendship and support. In the context of CBMM, uh, Tommy was the, 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 the main uh, originator of the, of the original grant proposal submitted to, to, to NSF. Tommy is the founder, the director, and the soul of CBMM. It's remarkable how effective he has been as a scientific leader in bringing together all these disparate branches of the, of the science of intelligence. 
and it, I think it, it really took somebody with his level of experience and, and seniority and ambition and that's kind of what it took to, to pull together something like, like CBMM. And what I appreciated about his leadership was that even though he had his own strong ideas about particular research questions, um, he didn't impose that on the other researchers and he was very willing to pursue a kind of pluralistic uh, vision of intelligence through CBMM uh, and try to foster different interactions between views of intelligence. Sometimes people say, you know, uh, an afternoon in the library can save you a month of work. I think it's fair to say that one hour with Tommy can save you a decade of two or two of, of, of going in the wrong direction. Every other week you get a new draft or a new download of, uh, oh, this, uh, this is how deep learning works. You haven't had time to check his hypothesis on the other ones first, but Tommy just keeps going. Tommy has been quite influential in the field, not only in terms of the specific work that he's done and, and shedding light into the uh, basic mathematics of uh, learning and the theory of learning, but also pioneering uh, computational models of uh, visual object recognition, the biophysics of computation in neurons, and many other fields and a lot of our experiments kind of gave results that I understood uh, fit best with what had been um, laid out by Tommy Poggio and his collaborators 30 years ago. That intellectual legacy is everywhere now in neuroscience and it really is helping us uh, put together a lot of the discoveries that we have now with advanced technology in a larger context. It's hard to go anywhere in science without meeting uh, alumni from, uh, from, from Tommy. So he's uh, trained generations of uh, amazing people all over the world. And I keep discovering new people. Uh, I go to a conference, I have dinner with people, and then all of a sudden I, I discover that at some point they, they pass through uh, Tommy's lab, they interact with Tommy, they collaborate with Tommy, or they were his former students or, or, or postdocs. When I think about it now, the amount of both resources and support and also freedom he gave me as a student was really amazing and I think really, really helped me grow as a scientist. I think from him I learned a lot about how to find the right questions in science and how to be critical of certain things. He's a really fun person to do research with. He's a very fun person to talk about science with. But more generally, he's just a very fun person to talk with, and that always made it feel really nice to be in his lab and be working with him. And to me, he seems like a real truth seeker. Like, I think he doesn't care so much about who's right, but rather what the truth is. And I think I really got to see that while I was working with him, and it was inspiring. I think I actually would be remiss to talk about Tommy's many wonderful qualities and not also mention the fantastic espresso he always had on hand, too. So. The three words that I would use to describe uh, Tommy are, first of all, brilliant, second of all, inspiring, and third, visionary. Okay, he's obviously brilliant and a very, like, a visionary in the field. Visionary? Visionary. I admire Tommy's ability to look far in the future and sort of see what's coming and anticipate it. Pioneering. Pioneer. Imaginative. Fundamental. Wise. Intelligence. I think he's probably one of the smartest people I've ever met. Inspirational. Influential. Curious. Infinite curiosity. So he's really touched upon themes like uh, mathematics, all the way to neuroscience, all the way to uh, cognitive science, robotics, self-driving cars. It's, it's, it's hard to think about fields that he hasn't uh, really impacted. Multidisciplinary. Theoretician. Tommy has a lot of grit in the way that he herded all the cats that needed to be herded in such a diverse group of people. I think Tommy is really approachable, energetic, and friendly. He's just a really fun collaborator to have. And I think he's just an amazing, uh, good person and human being, and honest uh, and nice. And gentleman. Thoughtful. He's an extremely supportive mentor. A scholar, a leader, and a friend. Can I say uh, chocolate sorbet? Because uh, he's always looking for that wherever he goes. Mm -hmm.